you ever mean to do something and then you didn't? How did that work out for you? I'm three plus key. I am your favorite social worker. Welcome back. I'm here to encourage you to pursue the smile by prioritizing the Lord, your physical health and persistent education. And today we're going to talk about the biblical perspective of procrastination. So some of you might know I'm starting a group home, the James House, and actually the inception of the idea happened 10 years ago, but then came my kids, then came life, then came other jobs. And I never did anything with that idea until recently. And so now we're in the beginning stages of developing the James House, which is a long-term Christian group home for adolescent boys. And it's super exciting, but my old procrastinating ways still seem to creep up. So the hope is, right, like I want this, but there's a hope toward opening it, but hoping is not enough. I need to actually work toward it and identify the reasons why I may not be working on it at any given moment. So let's start off first. What is procrastination? Procrastination is the act of putting off a task or a goal despite knowing it could have negative consequences and instead doing something less important. It's a common human behavior that can affect anyone's productivity, well-being, and mental health. Um, the, the passage that goes with it is James 4, 13 through 14, which says, Come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go into such and such town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet, you do not know what tomorrow will bring, right, friend? What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. And to paraphrase that, tomorrow is not guaranteed, so you better get on getting on. So I want to talk about psychologist John Grohl, who lists his reasons and roots for procrastination. The reasons are, number one, a person overestimates the amount of time left to perform a task and underestimates the amount of time required to complete it. And that goes into, again, tomorrow is not guaranteed. So we, we think we have years to complete a, a task or decades after the kids are grown, I'll go ahead and do this. And that's not guaranteed. We overestimate the amount of time that we that we have and um, underestimate the amount of time to complete the task. Oh, it'll just, I can do that in 10 minutes. Can you? <laughs> another thing, psychologists grow, um, another reason for procrastination is that a person overestimates the amount of motivation they'll have in the future, often believing they'll be more motivated to do the task in the future. So, Let's say it's time for us to um, eat better, right? That's something we can all relate to. Tomorrow I'll start when I'm motivated. I'll start uh, when I get a, a a good start to the day. I'll I'll uh, drink my water and I'll eat my greens, but I'll start tomorrow. That's another reason that people procrastinate. And the third reason that psychologists grow less for procrastination is that a person believes that they need to be in the right mood to be successful in completing the task. And that if they're not in the right mood, they won't be very successful at the task. So something I commonly encourage people to do, you might be anxious, but do the thing while you're anxious. You might be tired, do the thing while you're tired. You might be depressed, do the thing while you're depressed. And then when you come up out of that anxiety and that fatigue and that depression, your life will be better than what it was before you went into it. You just have to trudge through it, right? 
Um, so those are the reasons overestimation of time, underestimation of the time that it takes to complete the task and overestimation of the amount of motivation you'll have later. <laughs> and, um, you know, the belief that you have to be in the right mood for completing a task. Nope, friend, like Nike, just do it. And so an interesting scripture is from the um, author of Ecclesiastes 11, 3 and 4. If the clouds are full of rain, they empty themselves on the earth. And if a tree falls to the south or to the north in the place where the tree falls, there it will lie. He who observes the wind will not sow. And he who regards the clouds will not reap. So the context for this passage in Ecclesiastes is that um, in those days, there was an agricultural culture. So uh, the farmer in preparing their harvest or preparing to sow their seed, they're going to pay attention in great detail to the weather if um, the clouds are coming in, how the wind is blowing, if there's too much or too little rain. And what this is saying in Ecclesiastes 11 is do the thing anyway. The wind's going to blow. The rain's going to fall. You might as well get started today. And so another thing, um, consider psychologist Grohl's roots to procrastination, common roots Number one, people are perfectionists. Number two, people are fearful of not completing the task successfully. Or number three, highly relatable. People are simply too disorganized with their time and resources. So uh, two ways that I organize my time and resources, I use every dollar to budget my income and my money. And I also have a daily planner that I use so that I know what's going on during the day. And I know when I'm spending too much time on a particular task. And sometimes I hear people say, that's too tedious. I don't want to be involved with um, monitoring my finances or monitoring my time or put the effort toward doing so. And to that, I say, fine. Um, but if you're having issues in this in these areas um there's a saying uh if you don't if you keep doing what you've always done you're going to keep getting what you've always gotten so at some point if you find yourself procrastinating and you don't know what you, what the next task is or how long that task is supposed to be to be completed um a schedule would be very useful, very helpful for you. And if you don't want to use a schedule, come up with another means to accomplish your, your task and, and get a hold of your schedule. So the next thing I want to talk about is the sinful nature um, of procrastination. It's a sin and a lack of trust in God when we procrastinate because we don't believe that. A, God has already given us the tools we need. So back to the James House, my professional background is in group home management. I've worked with youth for over 15 years. I've been um, in management positions. I've run households. So with that, um, I have the basic skills necessary. I have the heart to accomplish this task of opening the group home. I'm also um, a strong self-advocate and a strong writer. So while I don't know how to write grants, this is something I believe I could learn or enlist somebody to teach me. The Lord has already given me the tools I need to complete this task and you too, friend. So um, it's a sin and a lack of trust in God when we procrastinate because we don't believe that B, that we need to do it right now and we fall into the sin of thinking we have more time. Again, tomorrow is not guaranteed and only the Lord knows when our time is up or, you know, God forbid, an, an injury occurs or something happens that um, prohibits us from moving forward. 
uh, in our goals, right? We don't have that specific knowledge. And it's rather arrogant to assume that you have all the time in the world. Why would you, you don't know this? <laughs> so you might as well get started today. And finally, it's a sin and a lack of trust in God when we procrastinate because we don't believe that we are lazy or disorganized uh, with our time because we have not yet surrendered our schedules to God. So friend, <laughs> we can be a little lazy. We want to watch the show. We want to go see the movie. We want to go out to dinner when we really should be dealing with the task at hand. Um, or as we mentioned before, being disorganized is a mishandling. It's a, it's a lack of proper stewardship of the resource of time that the Lord has provided for you. So Proverbs 6, uh, 6 through 11 says, we're talking about the ants. Let's observe the ants for a second. Go to the ant, O sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief, officer, or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. No one tells the ant to go and collect her food. She just does it. Verse 9 continues, How long will you lie there, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. So they're saying our wants and our desires, that doesn't just happen. Uh, we don't pull it out of thin air. We have to work toward these things and ultimately for the glorification of our Lord. So a question you should ask yourself is uh, why are you procrastinating? Is it possibly a lack of preparedness, right? So let's say you didn't study um, for a test. You're putting off studying for a test. That's a lack of preparedness. You didn't read the accompanying um uh, passages or, or what have you. You didn't do the homework leading up to what you needed to be studying for the test tomorrow. And so you're just putting off the studying altogether. You've put, you've gotten yourself into a little bit of a predicament, predicament. So is why you are procrastinating? Does that have to do with the lack of preparedness? Hebrew 12, Hebrews 12, 11 says, for the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. And I think this is excellent. Um, I'm a huge proponent for exercising self-discipline um, to get to your goals. One of um, the, the fruits of the spirit is self-control. And so that's something to Ask the Holy Spirit to, to, to work on within you. Um, another reason, why are you procrastinating? We know that God has something he's placed on our hearts. So for me, it's the James house. For you, you might uh, have, have your eye on a, on a promotion. I have a friend that has an excellent business idea and he's procrastinating working on his business plan and networking. Um, and so this idea, this business idea, it's placed on his heart, but he, we don't do it because we don't think we have it, have what it takes to accomplish this task. It could, this could be uh, insecurity. Um, this could be thinking that we don't have the right tools to be successful, but we do. The, the Lord won't call you forth to accomplish a task or achieve a goal in his name without giving you provision. Jehovah Jireh, um, God provides, right? He's got it for you. So whether you're me with the James house or my friend with the, with the business plan, 
just know that the Lord has given you the tools that you need. And um, with that said, we have to learn to trust God, that he has already equipped us with every tool that we need as spoken about in Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever so jesus has equipped us with everything good that we need to do his will so that it will be pleasing in his sight don't be discouraged friend and um, act now and the question is, how serious are you about fixing your procrastination? So you've identified, I do in fact have an issue with procrastination. I've thought about it. Why is it that I procrastinate? And so we have to look deep within ourselves and ask, are we even serious about fixing this problem? Is it, is it is it um, problematic enough in our lives? Is it, is it stopping us from going to the next level? Is it stopping us from fully honoring the Lord and the completion of this task? How serious are we about fixing that? So the question is, what incentive do you have to change? I would say um, for us friends, for us Christians, everything we do should be for the glory of god and that should be the reason that should be the tantamount reason why we do anything so that alone should be the incentive for why um why change this behavior uh next have you processed the deeper meaning behind why you procrastinate maybe you don't want to be doing the thing maybe you're insecure pray about it friend um and also have you considered an accountability partner uh, a friend, a partner, an app such as um, such as Every Dollar, or there's planner apps as well. Um, even in most of our email systems, you can you have a schedule built in um, to your Gmail or your Outlook or what have you. Um, a way to approach procrastination is with humility, prayer, faith and intentionality so you just understand you're a human ta-da <laughs> ta-da you're a human and you make mistakes you are also capable of change behavior friend just because you were a procrastinator yesterday you could start right now call yourself proclaim it over yourself i'm not someone who procrastinates I follow my schedule. I follow my path. I stay on task. You say that over yourself. Um, create a routine or a plan and stick to it. Maybe it's a little difficult the first time, second time, or third time. That's understandable, but just keep going. Uh, create a routine or plan and stick to it. And finally, let's talk about time. Time is a precious gift from the Lord and to waste it through laziness, procrastination, or an unorganized schedule is sin, friend. We were placed on this earth for the specific purpose of serving God, for us to waste it away with the things that we are so distracted by is unfaithfulness to God. Colossians 1.16 says, For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. So honoring the time that the Lord gave you being a good steward of the resource of time is how you glorify the lord and say thank you for this life that you have given me thank you for this breath 
in my lungs because I know tomorrow it could be taken away. And so finally, I want to ask you, friend, is there something you're putting off? What is it? Comment below. What is it? And how will you use this information today to propel yourself toward action so that you can pursue the smile? Thanks, guys. This was fun. I am three plus key. I'm your favorite social worker. I'm here to encourage you to pursue the smile by prioritizing the Lord, your physical health, and persistent education. Make sure you hit the subscribe button for more content. Like this video if you love it. And of course, share this video with somebody who would benefit from the biblical perspective of procrastination. And with that, I'll talk to you later.